welcome to Cooking in Coquille. Today, in celebration of Halloween, we are going to be making a scary good pumpkin soup and some goat cheese toast to go on the side. First things first, we have to gather our ingredients. Obviously, the most important ingredient in our pumpkin soup is our pumpkin. Head down to your garden and select a pumpkin that's about two to two and a half pounds. Obviously not the largest one. We might need that for a coach later. Um, but one of these should do nicely. Let's go ahead and use this one. Seems like a good size, maybe a little larger than that. Um, let's get to work. Once you have everything that you need, let's get started. We are going to start with our pumpkin or squash. To be cooking in your cauldron, first you start by dicing up your to your satisfaction. Go ahead and dice it up. Your pieces don't have to be tiny. Um, one to two inches is good. And then put that in your cauldron and let it simmer for about 45 minutes. Now if you don't have a cauldron, go ahead and get your witchiest looking pot, fill it with about half an inch of water, and then make approximately golf ball sized uh, wads of tin foil. Place them in your pot of water and then bring it to a boil. Once your water is boiling, turn your temperature down to low. Move your um, tin foil balls so they're approximately evenly spaced. I'm going to remove it from the heat so then there's less steam coming off. Uh, and then place a plate. It doesn't have to be covered in tin foil, but gently place a plate inside the pot. Then, add your vegetables, your squash, to the top. Spread them out. Cover the pot and leave it for 45 minutes. Once your squash or pumpkin has been cooking for about half an hour, go ahead and start your toast. Go ahead and slice your goat cheese logs into a uh, quarter to an eighth inch pieces. Uh, you'll find that goat cheese is very soft and if it bunches and crumbles, uh, that's totally fine. Um, it still will taste delicious. Once you've sliced your cheese and arranged it tastefully upon your bread slices, go ahead and season to taste with some 
salt, pepper, nutmeg, and a little bit of your local garden herbs. For mine today, I have used marjoram, basil, thyme, and a little bit of lavender because I'm particularly fond of lavender. Once you've got that done, then drizzle on some local honey. Now that you have your toast cheesed, seasoned, and honeyed, now it's time to actually toast it. If you have your magic wand, you can go ahead and toast it like so. However, for those of you without your magic wands, um, stick it in the broiler for about five minutes. The toast is done when the cheese is a little bit melty and the honey has caramelized. You'll be able to tell your squash is done when it's as tender as a fairy's smile um, or if it's easily pierced by either your wand tip or by a fork. So those look perfect. Once steamed, the peel of the squash is very easy to remove. Simply slide a fork or a spoon along the edge. Ta-da! Once the peel has been removed, add your squash to a food processor and then contribute a little bit of water from the pot um, and let's blend it up. Once you've had it blended up with some salt, pepper, and nutmeg per your personal tastes, it is ready to be served. Um, I ended up needing to add about a cup a little over a cup of water to get the soup to the consistency that I like. Um, it may be more or less uh, for your preferences. Assemble everything together and garnish your soup with a little more nutmeg and a dollop of sour cream and you are good to go. Enjoy! Things to be aware of. The type of squash or pumpkin you use will affect both the texture and the flavor. Uh, so be aware of that when selecting what you want to use. Um, if you really like acorn squash or butternut squash or if you really like pumpkin, uh, what you choose uh, will affect the flavor. Also, uh, it cools off really, really quickly. So basically as soon as it's done blending, it will be uh, room temperature. So. Um, also, don't expect hot soup or have a plan to reheat it. Don't forget to include your familiar in the cooking process. Otherwise, they can become quite upset at being excluded. No, it's pretty good. Very creamy and flavorful. In a good way? And um, nothing in it, in it for sweetener. True? Nope. <laughs> it has a unique texture and a mellow flavor. <laughs> cool. Mm -hmm. Pros, cons, thoughts assessment. Cool beans. You had me at goat cheese. 